Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. The gate receipts for Tyson Fury's fight with Tom Schwartz in Las Vegas are in and ticket sales weren't as good as originally reported. Actually, rather lukewarm uh, for the MGM Grand Venue on June 15th, which saw Schwartz beaten in a couple of rounds by Tyson Fury. We'll get to that in this video, but also wanted to touch on Tom Schwartz accepting Tyson Fury's invitation to be on his next undercard. And also Trevor Bryan, he is shortening his odds with the bookies to be Fury's next opponent opponent that will be in New York in either September or October that fight. I kind of see Brian as an opponent who's effectively Tom Schwartz 2.0 and I'll tell you why soon. So buckle in, let's go. And if we start with the, the gate receipts issue, $882,000 in revenue generated and that was on 5,489 tickets sold. That's on average $160 per ticket. And you might recall, they had announced that there was 9,000 in the venue on the night. So 5,489 tickets sold, but there was also 1,187 tickets that were comped. So complimentary tickets who were given out to whoever. So it could have been people who were celebrities, for example. Often what you see is people are given tickets for, you know, they want to build a big event vibe. Having famous people in the arena gives a bit of that. There would have been people in the casinos that would have got tickets as well. So 5,489 tickets sold and another 20% or so, 1,187 on top. That brings it to about 6,600-ish who were in the venue. It's not the 9,000 that was reported in the venue on the night and certainly well short of capacity for that venue, which is 17,000. So what do we make of this? Less than a million dollars in revenue generated, uh, less than 5,500 tickets sold, another 1,200 tickets comped. A kind of, I don't think it's terrible. I think for his first headlining event in Las Vegas against that caliber of opponent, a guy most had never heard of, a guy most boxing fans, you know, who've been around for any length of time expected was going to get beaten handily. And he did. He did get beaten handily, taken out in a couple of rounds. It was a mismatch and it played out that way. And I think that's probably actually led to some of the, I don't want to call it a flop because it's solid-ish. I mean, how many times do we see American big venues get sold out here? And that is far from a sellout. What was there, 6,600 or so for a venue of 17,000. And they did have different sections blocked off, but they were saying 9,000 on the night. But for me, it's kind of by the by because I look at this and go, this event always was a showcase sort of event. It's a whole lot of fake it till you make it. It's smoke and mirrors. I mean, Bob Arum was talking after that fight that Tyson Fury was one of the biggest draws that's ever come to Vegas, that he was on a par with a guy like Elvis Presley. I mean, some of that rhetoric is completely insane because if you look, crack down on the raw numbers, you can totally see that there wasn't so much demand that people couldn't get a ticket. And even by the per ticket price, the average was 160, you know, of, from the revenue from the tickets sold. We should take it for what it is. A first event to showcase him, especially to that market in Las Vegas, the West Coast audience, they would have been trying to get people tuning in, watching this, and we haven't had the, the TV figures come out yet, but what they got from this was, it was a whole performance, it was theatrical, the ring entrance, the singing afterwards, there was a whole performance element to it. It was a showcase of Tyson Fury as their new star at heavyweight for top rank and building him on ESPN. And we're going to see something similar when he has his next fight in October or late September, whenever it's going to be. Sounds like it will be October 5th from some of the stuff that Bob Arum is saying, but it's not locked in. And it will be the same again. Because they're talking about wanting to potentially now, this is Aram, he's talked up the possibility, let's have that fight next with Deontay Wilder, but he can't because Aram already knows that a deal is already locked up with Luis Ortiz. So some of that is just sort of hollow sentiment from Aram. And if Fury had have really wanted the rematch with Wilder, it would have already happened. It would have happened on May 18th. You know, Dominic Brazil wouldn't have been the opponent because Tyson Fury walked away from the rematch. But building up to a rematch which sounds like Showtime and ESPN are going to work out some sort of deal so they can show this together simulcast or whatever it's going to be 
they've got to do their part in their next fight. Deontay Wilder's got to go in against Luis Ortiz, really rock him um, to his core, take him out in more devastating fashion than he did in the first fight. And Tyson Fury will need to do something on his end to build his profile a bit more. And let's hope it is a slightly better opponent than Tom Schwartz was, because that was a mismatch. And if there's a second mismatch, well, I don't think hardcore boxing fans are going to be too happy about it, but it may not actually matter if it is a mismatch, just because you've probably seen from people you know who you, you'd consider casual boxing fans who are very enamored with what's happened, who've been swept up in this post-Fury win. I'm sure some of them didn't see the fight live. They've probably seen it later, seen the highlights, seen what he did to this a big German guy who was undefeated, um, re reportedly a big puncher who could test Tyson Fury, but gets completely dominated it was something to build Fury's profile and the second fight again in New York will be something similar it really is about trying to open up the casual market and that audience in the United States to build to that massive pay-per-view down the line. It's not about you or me who, you know, follow the sport so closely that we know that a guy like Tom Schwartz never really had a chance in that fight, that it was a that it was a puncher's chance at best. And even then, no one was really expecting that. They were over-talking Tom Schwartz's right hand. And actually, before I get to Tom Schwartz and accepting his invitation to fight on the undercard, I'll, I'll cut to the Trevor Bryan issue because there has been a lot of talk that he is one of the names that could be in serious consideration for a fight with Fury in New York. And he does have a fight scheduled with Manuel Char. I mean, you can go to the WBA website, go back uh, about three weeks or so. They announced that they uh, didn't need to go to Persbid because they'd worked out a deal to fight Char and Brian, that they were going to fight each other, but it would be, be about 20 days or so, and they would announce the, the date, venue, all that sort of stuff. All those details haven't come. It's overdue. So who knows what could happen? Maybe Trevor Bryan could end up being the guy that could face Tyson Fury. He's the so-called interim champion. He picked up that um, title, which was put on the line at late notice under murky circumstances. He beat BJ Flores, a faded former cruiserweight, to take that strap. And the reason I mentioned before that he would be Tom Schwartz 2.0 is because he's a big guy like Schwartz, but he's got a very padded record. What is it? 20 and 0 at the moment. But we just don't know how good he is. How good is Trevor Bryan? How many times have you seen him fight live? I mean, there's clips and different bits on the internet, but a lot of his opposition has been absolutely, you know, subpar. Before he beat Flores, who is a faded cruiserweight, uh, he'd had fights against two guys who collectively had over 40 losses. And this was a guy who was into some sort of interim title fight off the back of that level of opposition. So Don King, who promotes him, clearly still has a little bit of a push and sway in the sport to get um, t interim titles on the line when there was no business. They didn't need to create a belt then. And the only reason it came on the line was that the WBA said that they believed that there was some legal action with Freza Kendo and Manuel Char. And both of those guys, the representatives came out and said, what are you talking about? It's not. But the interim title came on the line. But we don't know how good Trevor Bryan is. But he is, as I believe, from that area, from the New York area. So he'd be the home fighter, a big unbeaten guy, but like Schwartz, very unproven. So he, it kind of would be Tom Schwartz 2.0. And there certainly is an argument to say is if Tyson Fury is facing a guy like Trevor Bryan or a similar caliber of opponent, is he doing enough on his end compared to, say, Deontay Wilder, who'd be facing uh, Luis Ortiz in their rematch? And Luis Ortiz is regarded still as a top 10 guy. I mean, people will debate about that. But I think for boxing fans, we know the quality and the caliber of the opponent. But in terms of casual fans, sometimes it doesn't matter to them. They just get swept away in the hype, the performance, the theatrics. I mean, some people believe, you know, WWE wrestling, all that sort of stuff is real. They don't know, they either unwilling or don't know that it's scripted and that the results are pretty much predetermined. So Fury and top rank and ESPN, they will be guiding him to another sort of big hyped performance. And that's why for me, the ticket sales issue doesn't matter so much because it's just building some buzz towards the next thing. 
But if, for example, Tyson Fury fought in New York and there was, you know, a similar amount of tickets sold and a similar amount of people in the building on the night, even with a opponent like a Trevor Bryan, for example, maybe then you could get a little bit concerned because that would indicate to me that maybe people weren't taking to him as uh, ESPN and top rank would have liked to. Because you'd, you'd think that after this performance, which um, has had some casuals swept up into it, that the next gate the next crowd would be bigger and more tickets sold. But it remains to be seen. But in terms of the next undercard, Tom Schwartz, he has said on social media, see here on screen, here's a, a, a photo with him and Fury. He says, a few days have passed. I would like to thank you for your respect and for, you, for your invitation, Tyson. You are a great champion, not only in the ring, but also outside. I would like to accept the invitation after a short break because learning from the greatest in the world is an honor for every athlete. Thank you for the great time and experience. And it does go on a bit longer in terms of Schwartz thanking his team and fans, all that sort of stuff there. But yeah, having Tom Schwartz on the undercard, it'd be interesting to see who they pitch him in with because I still don't know if we really know where Tom Schwartz's level at is at. I mean, I suspect it probably is somewhere around top 50 where most people sort of thought it was, but it remains to be seen because ultimately if he comes back, has a couple of good fights and beats some sort of top 30 type names, well then that ultimately will reflect even more on Tyson Fury and it's good for him. But anyway, what do you make of these ticket sales? Does it really matter? 5,489 and another almost 1,200 tickets comped. Are you expecting better the next time? Or does it not matter because ultimately it's going to come down to who's tuning in for the pay-per-view? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.